What's up guys? We are back with another connector video. This week, thank you Sandy Yu MVP for the suggestion. This week we're doing the Office 365 Users Connector. I'm gonna go through the triggers. Nope, there aren't any. I'm gonna go through the actions and then I'm gonna build a couple flows using those actions. And, little bonus, I'm gonna show you how to get around not having a trigger. Alright, and so we are here on my desktop at the Flow website. As always, we're going to go ahead and start out by clicking on My Flows. We are going to then click on Plus New and then Create from Blank, and then we'll click the second Create from Blank, which I still don't know why it's there. And now, since today we're going to talk about the Office 365 Users Connector, we are just going to go ahead and where is it how does it not show up when you type that that's funny you type its name exactly it doesn't show up that's great so anyways uh, type in office 365 the office 365 users connector is right here and so go ahead and click on that now first thing you're going to notice what happens we clicked on that connector and now it's just a blank screen why is that it's because this connector doesn't have any triggers Okay, so now flow doesn't tell you that here. It should, but it doesn't. Now if we click on actions, we're going to go ahead and see all the actions, right? But let's go ahead and just really quick touch on triggers, okay? So if your connector that you want to use doesn't have a trigger, it doesn't mean that you can't build a flow with it, okay? So what the, the ways to get around that are, one, you can type in the word manual, okay? Oops, no, hold on. I'm gonna go back one step. And now I'm gonna type in manual. And you can see the flow button for mobile and its trigger right here, manually trigger a flow, okay? So you'll need the Flow mobile app to do this, to use this effectively, because it creates a button. But what you could do is you could then press a button and then use all the actions in that connector, right? Okay, so that's one option. Other option is type in schedule, okay? Now you see the schedule connector and its trigger is recurrence, okay? So what that means is you can set up a flow to run every day at a certain time or once a month or once every week or however often you want. You can create a scheduled flow that triggers on that schedule and then uses the actions of whatever connector it is that you are trying to use. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, we know how to trigger a flow using the Office 365 Users Connector. Okay, we can trigger it even though it doesn't have any of its own triggers. Now let's go ahead, jump into the actions and talk about those. Okay, so first thing to know about this connector is that it is built on the Microsoft Graph, okay? And so Graph is the API that runs behind the scenes of Office and kind of collects information and updates information. And I'm, I know I'm keeping this very simple and, and Jeremy, thank if you watch this. Uh, I know I'm not gonna do it justice, so maybe we'll have to do a version two of this video. But anyways, this connector runs off of Graph and so all of this will be powered by that, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go one by one through each of these actions and kind of talk about what they do, okay? So first one is, is get direct reports, okay? And so this is, if you are, if you have AD set up and, and you have all of your profiles and hierarchies and things built out and, and reports and managers are one of the fields that you fill out, this information will then be available to you. You could then put in somebody's email address and you could find out who are their direct reports. Now inversely, you could also put in someone's email address and find out who is their manager, okay? Now, this one is about me. This is how you get like my profile. So if I were to use this action, let's go click over here, retrieves the profile of the current user. 
okay? And so now there's some documentation over here too that we're, we can learn more about each of these things. Uh, you can see the links here available in each of them. Re retrieve the user profiles of the specified user's direct reports, right? Same thing with manager. Retrieves the profile of the specified user's manager, okay? Get my trending documents. Now, trending documents, uh, that is, uh, if you guys are familiar with your office homepage, uh, near the bottom, you will see documents that you've recently worked on or recommended documents. That's your trending documents area, okay? And so for retrieves the trending documents for the signed in user, which would be you, okay? Uh, I'm not sure if we can do this on behalf of others. It's something we could try out. Now, get relevant people, right? Now, this one is like who you interact with a lot. And so same thing. At the home page there, if uh, you see all those people's faces often, I see my boss, I see Audrey, I see my marketing lady Stephanie, I see Gabriel, uh, and so, you know, the people that you interact with often, you'll see their faces there. Um, in this one, it will just list them, it won't show their faces. Um, so then get, oh, get trending documents right here for, for other people. So now retrieves the trending document for a user. Perfect. So my trending documents and trending documents for other people. Ooh, that's interesting. That could be nefarious, huh? I wonder, I wonder what permissions uh, that gives me. Now get user photo, right? So if you have a photo in your profile, this can go and retrieve that. Um, get user photo metadata. Right, so if there's some metadata about the photo that you need, sizing and, and location or, or tagging or any of that, this is available. Uh, get user profile uh, is, is someone else's profile, gets the profile of a specified user. Uh, search for users, retrieves the user profiles that match your search term. So you could just put in a search term, you know, uh, John Levesque, my name, right? That's actually how you pronounce it. I don't know if you guys know, a lot of people say Levesque. It's actually Levesque. Uh, so, so you could search for me, right, using my name. Uh, update my profile. Updates the profile of the current user, right? My, you see the word my, so that speaks to me. And then update my profile photo. Right, so this is pretty handy stuff to keep your 0365 user profiles and, and things in, in line. But uh, there's a key thing here that, that is pretty interesting. So what you can do with Get Manager is you can actually dynamically create approvals. So that way when a person goes and uses an approval, uh, we can actually find out who their manager is and then we can go and send them the approval automatically, right? Because I know a lot of times when we do, you know, time off requests and, and um, expense requests, a lot of these things go directly to our manager. And so instead of having to program that every time, we can build a flow to then to figure that out and do it for us. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we are back here at the My Flows page. And now we are going to build an approval using the 0365 Users Connector. Okay, so let's go ahead and create from blank and create from blank again for the second time. I'm still not sure why it's there. And let's go ahead now and let's do this. Uh, let's see here. How do we want to do this? Let's just go ahead and do it off of SharePoint. A lot of people have SharePoint. And we'll say when an item is created. Okay, now you'll have your vacation list, you'll have your time off request list, you'll have your, you know, what expense request list, whatever it is. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and grab something that I already have here uh, just for the fun of it. And so uh, maybe I'll do, let's see, flow of the week schedule. Maybe when I add something to the flow of the week, I want an approval to happen. Yeah, you never know. Okay, so from here now, this is our trigger, right? Because remember, 0365 users did not have a trigger of its own. So now this is actually the third way that we can use connectors that don't have triggers, right? Because we give it a trigger here from a different service. When an item is created in SharePoint, now let's go ahead and use the Office 365 users connector 
and we will say get manager. It's going to go ahead and help me create a connection here. Now, UPN, user principal name, also known as email ID. Okay, uh, so what we're going to do here is drop in the created by email address of my list. It's going to go ahead and pull the manager. And now what we're going to see is in the output here, we're going to we're going to start an approval, right? And my manager. So now, OK, real quick, approval actions all changed. So don't pay attention to these V2 actions at the moment. Uh, we're going to we're going to just do this start and wait for an approval. So the the approval that you're used to, it changed to this start and wait for an approval. OK, so now we're going to then go and choose the first to respond because we're just going to have the manager do it. And now title is going to be new flow of the week entry and we will assign it to. OK, so get manager right here. We have the outputs, but you can see that Seymour is hiding them. Seymour can be a real pain sometimes like that and hide the things you need. So you open up Seymour. OK, and so he, he gets the manager right here. And we're going to grab the I think it's mail. Yeah. Oh, look at this user principal name. Huh. We'll grab the mail right there. And then we'll say, please approve the flow of the week. And then we can add a link to the item uh, right here, link to item. And the description is, click this for more details. So then that way, the approver can see you know, who is the person going up, and what is the date, and all that goodness, right? Now, for every approval, we have to then build a condition or a switch or something like that, right? So that we can then route our decisions. And so then if we come in here and we choose response is equal to approve, then what we can do is send an email, And we'll send it to the created by. Congrats, your uh, re your flow of the week was approved. And then we could fill out the body, make it all nice and fancy by going here and turning on HTML and we could drop in HTML code if we want we could add CC we could add attachments we could do all sorts of stuff but for now we're just gonna keep it simple and if you guys want to go ahead and do all that and customize yours as you're following along please please pause me here customize to your hearts content and then we're just gonna do the same thing again right over here in the reject field right so I'm gonna go ahead and add an action I'm gonna choose office 365 outlook and I'll choose send an email then same thing to the created by email. Sorry, your flow of the week was rejected. And then in the body, we go ahead and just drop in all of our fancy body text. If we want to, we can come turn on HTML. We can change the importance. We can add attachments, all that goodness. OK, so that's one example here of how we can use the Office 365 users connector in a flow. Now, I'm going to go ahead and show you one more, okay? All right, and so now I'm back again here, back at the new flow from blank screen, and I'm going to type in manual, and the flow button for mobile here, manually trigger a flow happens, and then I'm going to do a new step, and I'm going to do Office 365 users, and I am going to do the get my profile action, Let's see what the advanced options are. Comma separated list of fields. So I can then choose the fields if I want, or I can just get back all the information, right? So, so let's try this real quick. Let's save it, and then let's test it. 
and I'll perform the trigger. And now go ahead, use my profile, run the flow. Thank you. And now let's check out the output. What does it give us here? So it says, oh, look at this. It gives my little about me and that my account is enabled. It gives you my business phone number. Uh, it tells you my given name and all my profile information. Uh, it shows you some of my past projects and the skills that I list. And then uh, what's this? Oh, yeah, some more skills. My, my own little personal website. Cool. And so then you can see here, maybe, you know, then I can use some of this information later uh, if I want to, uh, to build more robust apps and flows so that users feel like they're, they have a little bit more of a personal touch added because the, the experience knows about them, right? And, and also imagine if I can identify a user and all this information is tied to them, uh, then I can begin to have them fill out less information, right? Less fields that they have to fill out, less um, uh, duplication of information that they have to create. It's, it, it becomes a nice tool to really help simplify a lot of this user information input that we do. And so that's it, guys. A couple examples. We went over all the actions. I showed you how to go ahead and put a trigger in place if an action doesn't have one. And so uh, that's it for the moment. All right, guys, that's it. You... We hear ya. All right, <laughs> you know the drill. Like and subscribe, much love from me. See you guys in the next video.